Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's do some spring DIYs. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I went through my spindle stash and I found these three spindles that just were kind of weird shaped or only had one of them and I just didn't think I was going to be able to use them for any other projects. I actually want them to turn them into carrots. So I'm taking them to my miter saw and I'm just cutting them into places that kind of make sense where one side will be bigger and then it'll taper down to the smaller side. These are pretty simple cuts. So if you don't have a miter saw, if you just had a miter box, you could definitely make these cuts. And I will leave a link to this specific one in the description for y'all. Now this belt sander is absolutely not necessary, but I have one, so I'm absolutely gonna use it. What I wanna do is I wanna take all the little spindle carrots and take the tapered edge, the smaller edge, and I wanna round it out. Now it doesn't need to be perfect because carrots aren't perfect. So we're going for a handmade look here, but it's gonna look a lot better if I can round it out. Rounding out those ends definitely made all the difference. These little things look so cutie patootie now and we are ready for the next step. I love this garland. It is $16 from Hobby Lobby, but you know, always get it when it's 40 or 50% off and you can just pull it off and it's so much cheaper to buy it by the garland than just to buy sprigs of greenery. Now I'm gonna take my drill and I'm gonna drill a pretty nice size hole in these spindles because I really wanna make sure that the greenery stays in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue and then I'm gonna add my little sprigs of greenery and just depending on the size of the spindle, I put one, two, three pieces. It just depended on the size. The bigger ones, of course, I put more and the smaller ones, I put less. These already look so good. And if you wanted to keep the wood tone, you could just add some antiquing wax to bring all the wood colors together. But I'm actually gonna paint them orange, which of course I do not own orange paint. So I'm gonna mix some red milk paint with some yellow milk paint. I'm gonna do one spoonful of both. I'm gonna mix the powder together. If you're not familiar with milk paint, it comes in a powder form. So I'm gonna mix the powder together and then I'm going to add my water. You wanna do 50% water and 50% powder when you are using milk paint. I'm gonna be using my number 12 point at sash paintbrush and y'all, this paint color came out exactly like I wanted. I wanted this kind of vintage antique looking orange, definitely not a bright orange. So this was perfection. So you don't need every single color. You just need some of the basic colors and then you could mix your paint and make whatever color you want and make it exactly like you want. That's what I love about mixing paint colors. I put the greenery on the carrot before painting it because I figured I could then use the greenery to hold the carrot while I painted it and that would be a lot easier. I'm only gonna put one coat of milk paint on here and I'm going to dry it with a heat gun. It's gonna be really fast and really easy and I'm not really looking for full coverage. I'm really going for that vintage look so one coat of paint was perfect. Like I said earlier, I am using the number 12 pointed sash paintbrush. I love these pointed sash paintbrushes so much. I feel like everybody needs them. So I put them in a pack. You get a number 12, a number 14, and a number 18. And you save $10 if you buy them in the pack together. So if you've been wanting to try them out, y'all definitely buy the pack of three. You will absolutely not regret it. Oh my gosh, y'all, I am really so excited about how these are turning out. So they look great. I'm just going to seal them up with some fusion hemp oil. You're just going to brush it on your milk paint. You're gonna let it soak in for about 20 or 30 minutes, and then you're gonna take a paper towel and wipe off all of the excess, and you will still get that nice flat finish that I love about milk paint. Okay, this is an add-on project that I did not plan on doing, but once I saw how adorable those carrots turned out, I felt like they needed their own tray. So I found this wood tray in my stash and I'm gonna paint it with Fusions paint in the color raw silk. This is the all-in-one paint. There's no prep involved and 
you do not need a sealer it has a built-in sealer and this is one of my favorite colors it is a very pretty off-white color so I'm gonna give this a couple coats of paint and since it has a built-in sealer, you cannot wet distress it like you would chalk paint or milk paint, but you can distress it with sandpaper. So I just wanna go in and just lightly distress the edges of this piece. This is IOD's Whispering Willow Transfer and I'm actually gonna be using this cute little rabbit on here. If you have not seen this transfer, it is full of beautiful greenery and forest animals. It is so perfect for spring. So I'm gonna be adding this little bunny to my tray and I'm, put it, I'm gonna put it all the way on one side because I have those carrots in mind. So I'm gonna have the bunny on one side where you will actually be able to see it and it won't be covered up and then I'll have plenty of room for my little spindle carrots. So since this is kind of a curved surface, I'm gonna take my transfer tool that comes with every transfer that you get and I'm gonna start with the flat part and then I'm going to move to the sides of the tray and you just rub on the transfer and you'll be able to see it change colors as it adheres to your surface. And then you wanna pull up that clear plastic, but you wanna do it slowly. That way, if you have any little pieces that have not transferred, you can just put it back down and rub it a little bit more. I think that this rabbit was the perfect addition to this tray and this is definitely going to look great with my spindle carrots. For this project, I am going to be using a vintage tablecloth that has beautiful embroidery on it. Unfortunately, it does have a few stains. So I'm gonna show y'all how you can use these pieces that I find all the time for very inexpensive at estate sales and rescue them and give them a new life, even if they are stained. So I'm gonna use an embroidery hoop and I'm going to frame out the good part that is not stained. I'm gonna cut away all of the excess fabric and then that's it. This piece is done and I am ready to move on to another part of the tablecloth. I wanna save as much of this tablecloth as possible. So I'm just gonna be using different size embroidery hoops. If they have a lot of staining around it, I will use a smaller one. And if there's less staining, then I will use a bigger embroidery hoop. And I think that made it look like different patterns as well. And I even want to save the center of the tablecloth where it is just plain. So I'm gonna be adding just a plain fabric into a bigger embroidery hoop and we are going to add something to it. I'm gonna be using IOD's Alpha Belly stamp and also IOD's letterpress stamp. I'm gonna be adding the word grow on here and then I'm gonna put a little Alpha Belly at the top and at the bottom of the word. And I was thinking, you know, if you did this for a little girl's room, it'd be really cute to put their name or their initial in a blank embroidery hoop. I have my words laid out like I want and I'm take my thin mount and pick it up. Now I'm gonna take my IOD ink, this is the color New Grass, and I'm going to stamp it on the embroidery hoop. Now I like to put my fabric in first so that way I can make sure it is in the center of my embroidery hoop when I stamp it, but you do wanna put something behind it. So I'll put a little book, that way I have a um, solid surface behind it. You're gonna rub your stamp and then you're gonna pull it up. Oh, look how good that looks, guys. I absolutely love it. So with one tablecloth and a few embroidery hoops, I made a whole little gallery wall of artwork. Squarespace has all you need to power your e-commerce website. What I love is the ease of use, especially on the app and listing items, which is something that I do 
every single day. So open the app on the phone, I take my pictures, and you can also finish the listing in the app. So you can add your title, your description, your price, and your quantity. That is definitely important. And it is easy as that to list an item. So if you think that you are interested in trying Squarespace, go to squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs, and I will have a link in the description. Y'all can start your free trial and you can use code Julie's Designs and Signs to get 10% off your first website or domain. So y'all definitely go check that out. For this project, I'm gonna be using drop cloth, some boxwood greenery, some IOD ink, the IOD typesetting stamp, also some hot glue and a few other items that I forgot to mention, but you'll see it when I get there. I love this stamp, it's just such a classic look. It has all the uppercase letters and numbers. So I'm gonna be spelling out the word carrot. Now I have two sets of typesetting stamps, so that way I have two R's or two of anything that I need. Um, but if you did not have two sets, you would just wanna leave a space for it. So I'm spelling out the word carrot vertically like I want it, and then I'm gonna take my thin mount and just pick up my letters. If you do not have a thin mount, I highly recommend one. They are only $3. I really wanted to use orange ink for this. Now I did not have orange ink, but IOD sells empty mixing bottles. So you can take the ink that they already have and make your own color. So I took the turmeric color and the tomato color and made my own orange. The empty bottles comes in sets of three, so you can make three new colors with the inks you already have and the label is blank, so you can name it whatever you want. We are gonna call this one Carrot Orange. Now I'm going to ink up the typesetting stamp. I really love the color that I created. I think it is a very pretty vintage orange, exactly what I was going for. So once it's inked up, I'm gonna turn it over and put it on to my drop cloth and you just wanna kinda lightly rub your stamp to help the ink adhere to your piece and then you pull it up and look how good this looks. That's what I love about stamping. It always gives you that vintage look. Now I'm gonna take my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut a carrot shape around the word carrot. I like to leave a little bit of excess at the bottom and the top because you can always cut off more fabric, but you cannot add more on. That would be difficult. Also, I think I forgot to mention, but I have two pieces of drop cloth folded over here. So I'm actually cutting up two pieces. Now I'm gonna start hot gluing my two pieces of fabric together. I'm hot gluing about a quarter of an inch in from the edge because I want a raw edge look. That is just a look that I like. But if you wanted a clean edge, what I would do is I would cut out the carrot shape first. I would hot glue the two pieces together, turn it inside out, then you have your clean edge and then you can um, stamp the word carrot on there. You could also use different fabrics. This is just inspiration. Y'all take it and y'all do it in your own style. So I haven't hot glued the two pieces the whole way up yet because if I did, it'd be really difficult to stuff the bottom of the carrot. So I went about halfway up and I'm going to use some stuffing and start stuffing the carrot. And then I'm going to hot glue the rest of the pieces together. You want to stuff it to about an inch or two above the letter C. That way when you kind of scrunch it together, you can still see the letter C. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my pick of boxwood. I got this from Walmart and I really think it looks a lot like carrot greenery. And then I'm going to take some jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around the top. I like to wrap it a whole bunch of times just because I like the way that looks. It adds more texture to it and it also keeps everything in place. Once my carrot is all together, I look at those edges and just see if anything needs to be trimmed up, straightened out. I like to round out the bottom of the carrot and then I take some sandpaper and rub it on all of the edges and that immediately frays everything and gives it this beautiful vintage worn look that I love. 
And now you have a huge carrot to put out in your spring decor. Y'all definitely let me know what y'all think about this project. Alright guys, I hope that y'all enjoyed today's video. I'm sorry it was a little bit shorter than normal. We are actually having ice storms over here. So the kids have been off of school for a few days, so I didn't have as much time as I normally would to film a video, but I am trying to be consistent and get y'all a video every single week, no matter what. So y'all definitely leave a comment below. Let me know what was your favorite project that I created in today's video. Mine was a little bit shocking to me. I've been seeing people do those spindle carrots for a long time now, and honestly, I kind of thought it was a little bit of a waste of a spindle, but now that I've created them, I am obsessed. They are beautiful, although I would still only use spindles that I really didn't think I could use on another project. And I think they look, I think it looked really good to have a variety of different spindles instead of the same one for each carrot. So that was my personal favorite. Y'all let me know what y'all was, was. And I'm also in my shipping room because I wanted to remind y'all, if y'all don't know, the first Wednesday of every month, all of the items, like the things I have behind me that I first thrift for all month long go up on my website at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. That is juliesdesignsandsigns.com. And I want to show y'all something. If you love the carrots, that will also be available on my website. I have a limited amount of these. Um, I had something else made. If y'all remember a few months back, I thrifted this beautiful chenille blanket and the seamstress friend of mine has turned them into these adorable bunnies. How cute are these? And I added a little bit of twine and a little bit of greenery around um, their necks just because I felt like that was more my style. I will also have a limited quantity of these. So if you love them, make sure you go grab them right now. I also just received a huge fusion order. So if you love fusion paint, you definitely want to go check it out. I believe everything has been restocked along with everything already offer being restocked. Y'all, I got a bunch of new fusion paint colors, the fusion all-in-one paint. That is the one that you don't need to prime or seal it. It's the all-in-one. Everything is built in. And I am, y'all know, if y'all been watching my videos, y'all know I have been loving milk paint. So I also ordered a ton of new colors in milk paint and a lot of my favorite of the all-in-one paint colors, they also offer in milk paint. So that is really exciting. I am just really excited to try some of those new colors in my upcoming video. So y'all definitely go check it out. Also got a bunch of new paint brushes. If you love the painted sashes, like I told y'all earlier, I have a little bundle of those. So y'all definitely go check everything out and I have one more thing that I wanna tell y'all. As you can see, my shipping room is very packed and I do not have space for things that are not settling, obviously. <laughs> so the things that are not settling, we are just going to move it along. I tried it, it didn't work. Um, I bought a bunch of Morgan's bath bombs. They are locally made by this 23 year old Morgan. I personally love her products and I will continue to carry the loofah scrub and the shave bar because I absolutely love those. If you had not tried them yet, I would definitely recommend it. But unfortunately, the bath bombs are just not selling for me. So I'm going to do a buy one, get one free sale. And I'll have a link in the description to that specific sale. But basically, you're going to put one in your cart and I will send you a, another one during shipping. And it's just going to be kind of like a grab bag situation. You just get whatever scent you get. But I promise you, all the scents are amazing, and if you do absolutely love her bath bombs, you can always go order more on her website, but I personally will not be carrying them anymore on the website. I'm so sorry. I just kicked the camera. I think that is everything that I needed to tell y'all on today's... Oh, nope, there's one more thing. So if you want to watch me shop for all these items 
y'all definitely go check out my other channel that I started. It is called Julie Thrifts. I will have a link in the description. And every day I post my daily shopping, thrifting adventures over there. So if you want more daily dose of me, definitely go check that out. Don't forget about the website sale. And also, if you are thinking about starting your own website, y'all go check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs and use my code to get 10% off y'all first website or domain. And I will also have a link to that in the description below. Basically, everything you need will be in the description below. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope it inspired y'all and I will see y'all in the next one.